Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of last week's video where we are breaking down how Dopa carries his feeding team on Fizz. To get you up to speed, in the last part Dopa made a few good roams and plays to get himself to 5-0 which sets him up to carry now even though his whole team is behind. So let's jump right back into it and see how he pushes this lead. After the last kill, he recalls and is heading back the lane after Sintra shoves it. Remember how he roamed from the first video and it looked just like this. Sintra shoved the wave, then looked to recall, so Dopa can push this next one fast and look for another roam. If you were Dopa here, which lane would you roam to? Top or bot? Remember, it's best to roam with your jungler as it makes the odds of a successful roam go way up. So the best place to go is top here. He heads up to top and gets an easy shutdown on the Jace. Then he can recall and head back to mid, but on the way back, he can see Lee Sin jump over the wall to Herald. He knows it takes a while to do it, so he clears midway first. Then he heads over to see if Lee is actually doing it, which he is and Dopa picks up another kill, although it sucks he couldn't kill him before the Herald died. He knows he can't defend the Herald on the ground by himself, so he leaves it and lets the enemy team pick it up. Alright, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here, as nothing much happens. Although, he does get greedy killing this wave and gets solo killed by the Syndra. This does hurt his chances a little to carry since Syndra got a lot of gold from that, but he's still a really fed fizz. Alright, we're about 2 minutes ahead now. Mid tier 1 tower has fallen, so Dopa is focused on pushing mid wave and looking for roams. They spot Lee on this ward with his bot lane collapsing as well, so he looks to pick him, but ends up not being able to land the shark. The enemy team collapsed on the rex eye, using Lee ult and Jay's teleport to kill her. So it's time to catch mid wave again, because remember, you can't look for plays without pushing your mid wave first. If you don't, you lose a bunch of CS and fall behind and experience really fast, throwing your lead. He sees the enemy team trying to steal his blue again though, and heads over looking to fight. He knows Jace doesn't have teleport from earlier in his top lane, and Lee doesn't have ult. Also, his Kale's teleport is up, and they are fighting in a choke point, which is really good for Kate. Kate can put traps down in these little chokes, which makes it hard to get to her without taking a ton of damage. If you remember from the team fighting video two weeks ago with Fnatic Nemesis, we talked about how you don't always have to go all in when fighting with assassins. You want to go in, jump out, then back in again. So watch Dopa here. He opens with Q onto the Syndra and W for a small burst, but saves his E to disengage. He can look to go around the back now since his Kale is channeling teleport, which brings us to another concept we talk about a lot with assassins. It's much easier to get on the back line and kill them if you flank like this, as they don't see you coming. This way he doesn't actually have to walk through the Galio or Syndra on the enemy team. As he comes around, Kalista has no idea he's coming and ends up being an easy kill. Then he uses his E to jump over the wall and shark the Galio for a clean fadeaway kill there as well. And finally, he cuts off the Lee for a triple kill. So this puts him at 9-1, meaning he has more than half of his team's kills. The game is still not going to be easy, but he's definitely fed enough to carry them. He's going to recall now and spend all of that gold, then push mid wave again since Kale is top and Kate is pushing bot. After that, he heads into the jungle to clear some vision and look for a pick. This is what you want to be doing on assassins when you're fed. You're great at killing one person, but you're not the best at team fighting. He finds Lee here, so he uses shark and goes in, but ends up getting collapsed on by three of them. Dopa knows this wasn't worth, as dying with such a big shutdown for just one kill can throw the game. He wasn't expecting Syndra to be here it seems, because Callista was the one farming mid and nobody was coming top, but this was still a misplay. He also could have thought he could kill the Lee really quick before anyone got the chance to help, but it's impossible for us to know what he was thinking. Either way, we both know this wasn't worth. After respawning, he's going to start side laning, which is something you want to be looking to do as a fed assassin. You can basically 1v1 anyone. He wants to be top here because Kale has TP, with Baron coming up in a minute and a dragon is down. But if dragon was coming up, Kale should be top and Dopa go bot. If you don't have TP and are looking to split push, you want to do it in the lane closer to the objective coming up. Anyways, as he heads to top, look at the minimap. You can see Syndra recalling bot and Jace moving from mid into their top jungle. Taking information like this is crucial to helping you make the next decision. Since he knows Jace should be heading to top lane for this wave, 
he cuts him off at his own blue for an easy kill. Now he can go to top lane and shove these waves in before recalling and spending his gold. Picks like this are crucial, and we can see why by looking at the minimap. With Jace dead, the enemy team knows it's a 4v5 for them, so they aren't looking to fight. Baron is coming up, so by killing Jace, the enemy team has to give up all vision control around Baron, which sets up for more picks when they are face checking or trying to get Baron vision. And even if your team doesn't go get vision with a pick like this, it still makes it a lot harder for the enemy team to make plays or do anything without them throwing. Anyways, this wouldn't be a dopa replay without some of that 200 IQ dopa macro, so get out those notepads. First, let's zoom in on the minimap. Take a good look at what objectives are coming up, wave positionings, etc. Where do you think Dopa will go now? Pause the video if you need to. Alright, let's see what he does. Yeah, so he noticed red buff is coming up, meaning Callista would be coming for it. So he went straight from base, jumping over the dragon wall to avoid wards, and now we all know how easy of a kill this will be. So that's another pick, making the enemy team have to play 4v5 for another 30 seconds at least. And after getting that kill, he's already in a perfect flanking position, since the enemy team is pushed out pretty far. So he cuts them off and goes in, knowing it's impossible for them to win this fight without their Callista, killing them all and setting his team up to take Baron. After that, his team is caught up and the enemy team is definitely super tilted, so they end up forfeiting here. All right, so even with a feeding team, Dopa managed to hard carry this game and tilt the enemy team with smart macro movements, getting constant picks on anyone that was alone, while also playing team fights really smart as well by playing slow and flanking. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.